Hi everyone, you're listening to the Via Lucci podcast, uncensored and completely unedited discussions about life and everything in it. We hope you enjoy the show. And we here we are. Hello. Leanne, is that how it's pronounced? It is. Um, Leanne. Good morning. Do you know how many people called Leanne that have spelt their names differently that I've met? So L-E-A-N-N-E, L-E-H-A-N, and then I met somebody else who would to two ends. Oh, mine's two ends, L I A. But yours is L I. Yeah. Hers was L A. Oh, it's going to get confusing. <laughs> but, um, before I forget, what you yep. just mentioned about, we were talking about priests. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you said you know somebody. A retired priest. I mean, he got, he actually, when he was practicing, he was, he got caught holding hands with a nun. So he got, he got kicked out and he became a porn producer. He's the most ethical porn producer I've ever met. Yeah, I don't judge people. I just think, look, that, what was in him before? Like that, or was it not? That, no, I was going to say it's like it's not like a, he become an Uber driver. He had to do it for money. That's quite a weird thing to. Was his somebody knew was involved or? Look, there's loads of many reasons people. Or you just didn't ask any questions. <laughs> Maybe you should just get him in and interview him. Yeah, that, that's not a joke. Actually, well, yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> get him yeah, but there's only one it. question that I've got for him. Like, what <laughs> happened? And then after that, like, I get the rest. It's just. Um, but yeah, to say, you know, because I was talking about guests I'd had on and yeah, she's a priest, but the funny thing is it was, yeah, she said I was, I was a normal kid. She said I was into like Beatles and things and wearing miniskirt and, but people keep telling her she should be a priest and she said, but like people kept saying it to her and then just like a weird load of things happened and then she ended up and, but she went through it and I thought, oh, right there, there you go. That's how you begin to become a priest. But it's just like random stuff. She'd walk past somewhere. Somebody gave her a book. She didn't left it. And then one day she opened it and saw one passage and that part. And it was all weird. But she was telling me about how they're trained. and that, It's real strict. Yeah, but I hadn't thought. She said like, oh, yeah, two weeks ago, or so, she said, um, she said I was um, on the train and somebody just come up to me and said, I'm going to stab you. I'm going to kill you. And she, she said, oh, we, we're taught de-escalation technique and i hadn't even thought about that you know because you have to deal with god knows how many different types of people yeah um but then yeah and it just went on went on she, but she said i i did i did not want to be a priest i was just in like beatles music and things i didn't want to be it but it's funny to just to watch that process um talking of the process of getting into things um so your background can you just quickly say what because i'm i'm worried about the wording of things oh the wording i know of... adult seems to be the main adult that's fashionable today isn't yeah it? just to call it the adult yeah in W1, in yeah. W1, if you can yeah, just Yeah, W1, call it. let's be a little bit <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can go to the suburbia and there's loads no, of other yeah. words for it. <laughs> so it was a porn industry. Okay. That's what it was. Um, when I entered it, there was advertisements for porn actresses. Yeah. It never said adult actresses. If somebody said that right, to me, I'd be like, word, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, how old, what age do you think you're actually an adult? That you part know? of it, it's becoming mainstream. So they've had to rebrand it sort of thing as adult to make it more mainstream. Because porn wouldn't really work. The word porn's been hijacked because if you look at, you've got car porn, food porn. What porn? Car porn. Car. Oh, yeah. C A R. Yeah. 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 Car porn, porn, food porn, yeah. makeup porn. So, in oh, fact. Oh, I see what you mean. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mainstream right. companies have hijacked the name porn. Yeah. So, obviously, we've had to look at the industry and say, well, what is a porn star these days? None exist anymore. You know, it, it, you can't be a porn star. You can be before a Before we performer. started recording, we were discussing, what is there a... What, the people that were making porn DVDs, because of the internet, where are they making their money? Okay, what? So are they gone specially... What was you talking about? Sorry, I'm not going to say that. What, what was the... Um... Oh, the part was there a Pirates of the Caribbean or something? Oh, you've got, yeah, so they're the trilogy or there's like um, takeoffs from mainstream movies and stuff. Right. They were normally done by a major company yeah. called Private. Yeah. Oh, that was it, yeah. And they were like major financial, yeah. you know, cost. But they used to make the money on the DVD sales yeah. and, you know, all these companies knew that the internet was going to take off. Mm. So they were backlogging it. But when you sign that model release, I mean, we talk about financial mm. shortly. Um, you know, you only get paid f for doing that DVD and the photos that go with it. 
There's no royalties like a normal film. No, there's oh, no right, royalties. Really? No, I'd be worth a fortune by now. Isn't there a sort of bigger comp? Don't they come under a bigger umbrella with like unions or something? Are you joking? Really? No. You know, there's there's no union in right. the UK specifically for the adult industry. I was asked if I wanted to do it. Right. Yeah. But it would just be impossible within the UK because of British law. It's still an unlicensed, unregulated industry, so you can't have a union to make something that. It's not already regulated. Are they allowed to... So, on the DVDs, would they be allowed to actually put that onto the internet without you knowing? Like They because, can just do what they want with it. No? Yeah. Are they, is there any copyright laws there? Or are they able just to... So, the companies, are, like, say, say for myself, which I originally shopped for, oh, I've got no rights over what they do with it. If you actually went on to Google now, you could get your phones out and yeah. do it. You'd look at... You'd think I was doing porn two years ago. Oh, wow. Because what, even though I, I retired like 22 years ago, they're allowed to re-edit it and they've just got to re-edit it one little bit. And when right. a new platform comes up, they can oh, just resell right. and resell onto different platforms. So the companies are making a fortune two decades later out of my st material. No, and you get nothing. You I get, get nothing. nothing at all. Oh, no, I just get called, called a porn star by the British media still, yeah. you know, and I'm like, been retired 22 years. Yeah. And you... Got into it just out of need. Do you know what? Do you know? I did make. I read that you're the sort of the black sheep of the family in terms of you sort of do what you want. Yeah. Well, do you know what? That's because I had no structure, no boundaries growing up. In yeah. fact, I, yeah, I was like the black sheep. Yeah, you know, yeah. my mother was very jealous of me um, because my father kind of made me his, yeah. you know, what they, your favorite, but you, you're a child. It's not your fault. And then, so my siblings really kind of didn't react very well to me growing up. And what year is this? Oh my God! If I was born, in, I'm going back to 1980 when yeah, I was so younger. Like and get, nowadays, that's no, back then, I mean it still knew. happens yeah. today. And in fact, I don't have a relationship with my family anymore, um, for many reasons. But for me, when I became a young mum and I needed help, they didn't help me, and then my father died. Yeah. And for me, I had I was surrounded in a council estate, surrounded by drug dealers and thieves and yeah. car thieves and you know when you look at it, no matter how you look at it, they are cr criminal activity. Yeah. So when you are raised on a council estate in a suburban area like that, I didn't want that for myself. Yeah. And I didn't want to be a drug dealer. I didn't want to be stealing cars for a living. And I didn't want to be any kind of person who was going to safeguard a criminal. Yeah. And I just thought, well, nobody's looked after me. Where's my standing ground? I was on £54 a week as a single mother looking after two children. Yeah. You know, you can't even... You can't even have ice cream, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Can't do anything with that. And no matter, and I chose to be a probation officer, actually, as my first career. And nobody supported me. They said, why would you want to work with criminals? Mm. And so you, anything I tried to do that was good was put down on. And I thought, do you know what? Bolts Fuck you yeah. all. I'm okay to swear. I'm not. Yeah, yeah you know, no, you, you it's not on the BBC, <laughs> so we're absolutely fine. Swear away. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought, Fuck you. Nobody's yeah. looking after me. And I actually needed and i know you're gonna all think this is probably bonkers i needed some stability and structure in my life and going into porn disciplined me yeah i didn't have casual sex i wasn't going into bars and getting trashed and picking up strangers you know when i say stranger that could just be men who live in the town <clears throat> it happens on a, everybody does it um and i was able to Fi make financial decisions i was able to get out of the council house system yeah. I, I you know i must my mother actually went mad with me for providing my council house back to the government. Oh. After two years, I said, I don't want to be in this system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went to work, found my structure, found a lot of support mentally, and I learned about consent. Within the industry? Within the oh, industry, right. outside the Even industry. Even back then? Back then. Oh. I was in a really professional industry. If you turn up to work late yeah. or any sign of alcohol or drugs or anything, they would not shoot you. Bang! Oh, You've really? lost your I career. They'd be, oh, okay. No, no, no. It's it, you can't. Yeah. Um, Are they very strict as well with like testing and very, very? Yeah, because because I've heard this before of you know people in the industry going along and, and lying and say that they've had a test when they haven't, and then they've just literally been told to leave. Yeah, I mean that is the good side of the industry yeah. okay so don't get me wrong there is a bad side to every industry even like podcasting industries or <laughs> you know i do a lot of work with the nhs now i'm beside the police and 
there's bad in the police industry. I mean, you would have heard local um, news news bulletins lately about the abuse within the yeah. NHS. I mean, I'm well aware of that because I get the freedom of information on a project I'm working on. There was probably more abuse in those trusted industries than the porn industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then you've also got to look at the British industry compared to the American industry, compared to the European industry. The English industry is known as a cottage industry. It's very small um, and very few productions getting done. Most pe- most performers go into escorting uh, yeah. b- beside that or find sugar daddies online. You know, and then with the testing, unfortunately in the UK... Um, the NHS are picking up the bill for the free testing for people to be sex workers oh, right. and porn performers. But they only give you like a hard copy, so it's easy to fake it. Oh, right. So there's a lot of There's fake no electronic, it. nothing online. No, no, no. There's Like the Americans are well sorted oh, right. on this. They're, they're decades ahead of the UK. Yeah. But there we are a bigger industry yeah. as well. Mm. But yes, there's a big complaint going on in the UK market now about the fake I've Oh, fake, right. fake certificates going because around. Because wasn't there a, a, some, there was a big thing in America where some guy was working and he'd had AIDS? Wasn't there in like 20, 30 years ago in like a... You were on yeah. about, yeah, 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 John Stagliano and um, so there was a few others as well. What they had done to try and save cut production costs, they went to shoot in Brazil oh, right. or some South American country. I mean, I've interviewed John Stagliano and I'm sure it was Brazil. And they went there to save money. But if you're only going to pay a, a, a porn performer fifty pounds, but their test is going to cost thirty, right? Yeah, yeah. Then you're going to get fake testing, yeah. Mm. And that's how, you know, infections were getting into the yeah. industry by the you know producers cutting costs. Yeah. Um, and now you know it's the only industry in the world that pays less than it did twenty five years ago. <laughs> so th- how Man. that is there an elite? Actor, actresses in adult, like there was, because well, that's what I said, how are they earning their money? Are they doing just stuff online now? There's no, they're not doing physical media, or like DVDs and things. Haven't they gone to like, you know, there's like OnlyFans out there now. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's yeah. all online. There's no physical, there's nothing being. Yeah, there... yeah, yeah. There are still. Films? Yeah, still films being done. So in America, there's still a huge market because um, one of, one part of my career is um, counselling the adult stars yeah. from the US and the UK. And there's lots of production still going on. Mm-hmm. And they have consent. In America, you have consent forms and you have a list. You get sent a, like an itinerary list before going on to, to a set to agree to what you will do and what you won't do. And, you know, you've even got um, on-set um, intimacy coaches in the U.S. And it's becoming very similar here. There are very few uh, porn producers here. Right who pay models directly for the content. As yeah. I said, the ex-vicar is, is yeah. the best one. <laughs> um, but he's great. He's artistic. He's very caring. And then you've got the other ones that are not so caring. Right, yeah. Um, and so, you know, girls are making money that way. However, you do have OnlyFans and you have many vids and, <clears throat> you know, Pornhub and all this stuff. But it's a false sense of reality because the British media will... And I, and I say the British media because they're the worst in the world. <laughs> And I've been on the receiving end. Um, so what you read in the newspapers or online about somebody earning, say, £10,000 per month, that's probably the top 0.2%. So, you know, during COVID, you know, only fans went through the roof yeah. where people wanted to sell yeah. material um, for, in for survival and um, to feed their children and pay their mortgages and rent. But very few of them were even able to cover their rent because... Yeah. You don't make that much money. You'll be lucky if you can pay your rent. Yeah, with well, the £10,000 a week, there's a reason why she's being spoken about as the one with the £10,000 yeah. because it's very me, unique. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like in my era, um, I was the porn queen of England and I was on like 10000 a week. Now, that's very rare. Mm. And and I wanted to make that clear is because so many people say, oh my God, if you can make that much, see that news we can make that much. Yeah. Mm. And the headlines, you know, porn queen of England yeah. makes ten k a month, says it were better for her children. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, can, does somebody want to ask me between the lines why it was a yeah. chosen career to make my children's lives better and how many people who I work with were making that kind of money? And there was very, very few. So what, what do you think about the uh, um, OnlyFans and those online things as a general? Do you go with the world's everyone's choice or do you go, look, there's a lot of downside to the... There's a lot of downsides. You That's know, what the... I mean. But if, in an overall, what do you think... I think it's a fantastic way okay. if you understand marketing, accounting, 
publicity. Because it's always PR, good to have an opportunity yeah. to do those things and to not a be choice. stigmatized. A choice. Absolutely. But my worry is that you've got a load of kids doing it basically yeah. and haven't got a clue what they're giving what they're away. Doing. And also for... it's just like you'll start off with a picture and then someone will ask, oh, you know, say, oh, I'll give you more money for the, for a video. And for then, a video. And then, and then you're taking more clothes off. And, you, and then by the end of it, I've, I mean, I've had a lot of interviews in the past that people were saying, you know, I, I went on there innocent with bikini pictures and then I was end up... Well, know, model, just on model. Yeah, model. Yeah. And then I've ended then up... Model. Because, the, yeah, and then the, the money comes and then you're like, ooh, yeah. I can get more money for this. I get more money for that. And by the time that you know it, you're, yeah. you've got everything out and you're... You know, and you it, that's because a lot of the you've also got to think a lot of people are never talk about emotions at school. Yeah. They're, they're not educated. I definitely wasn't. I mean, my sex education was a black and white movie talking about how to have a baby. Yeah. You know, I mean, at that age in my life, I wasn't even thinking about having children. Mine was just periods and then how... <laughs> you got yeah. lucky. Yeah, yeah, mine was just periods and then... You're far <laughs> younger than me then. <laughs> and we just got like a load of pads and then it was like, there oh, you go. And serious. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I, they didn't talk about periods. We just had this not? like artificial penis going, <laughs> going in on the screen and... And then yeah. this bit of sperm being ejected, <laughs> and that's how you make a baby. There was no, no enjoyment nothing, in it. No. Yeah. yeah, they never said the woman was really happy, yeah. you know, and they were in love, you know. But I learned from a very young age that, you know, Cinderella wasn't a happy young person, mm. and that my Prince Charming wasn't going to come in on horseback and yeah. or save me from a tower with my long hair and all this, you know. I he was gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why he was so well dressed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in Snow White, I mean, who would have thought that, I'm, you know, you listen to these children's books and we're educated a load of bollocks when we're younger. Mm. And unfortunately, you know, I didn't have those surroundings. And many girls in society, very young girls that are becoming the legal age of only fans, their parents, you know, to keep a roof over their family's head and yeah. working two jobs each, they're not at home in charge of the internet and they're not at home to provide that guidance for their children. And the schools have been restricted on what they can advise. The police only have so many actions. How how old do they have to be? It must be illegal. What, to do pornography? Yeah. No, 18. And like I need the online stuff. Only fans. Everything is 18. Mm. Right. Quite personally, I think it should be raised to 21. But that yeah. that that's there forever. O always. If, if mm. anybody wants to know how long it's there for, Google my name. Right. <laughs> I swear on my... But yeah. <laughs> does, do they... I mean, they know, but it's... They must know that in the future, that's they're basically pushing all their chips in to one at in, 18. Because relationships, family, work, if that's the, that's not like a secret thing or a porn DVD, that's there online. Uh, well, I mean, I can relate to them. When I first got into pornography, I didn't think my brothers were going to find out. I didn't think my whole town was going to find out. I didn't know the whole of the UK were going to find out. Yeah, because it's going to a DVD. Yeah. But if it's online... Oh, my God, it's everywhere. That's, yeah. that's, every, that's all your employees. Everything. Everybody knows. But, you know, now you're not allowed to be judgmental. So, in fact, I mean, you know, the young girls and young boys, because I know, in fact, being a counsellor for the industry and still being in contact with a load of um, performers from my era, the men have really struggled. On really. OnlyFans? No, just in life. Oh, OK. Because not you're, you're given a skill at a young age, 18, if you get into it 18, to turn your emotions on and off. And that is the most damaging experience because that carries through with you in life. So then you stop having empathy for others and you can become very bitter. And for the men, it's, that you know, having a relationship is almost non-existent for them because they can't keep down a relationship. I, I knew a guy um, <clears throat> at nightclub, so oh, I can't think of years. So it must have been about 18 years ago, something like that. Um, and, and he was well known in the British porn industry. Black guy. Nicest guy. Oh, one, one, <laughs> It might not be him. But anyway, <laughs> the nicest guy. It's just a nice guy at night. Nice guy at a nightclub with a few drinks in him. Nice, like really yeah. friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I've I'm worked not, with him. I'm worry. not saying it's him. Not saying it's him. <laughs> but oh, I've got my point. They've thrown me off now. They've <laughs> unnerved me. Um, right, as I said, it's not saying it's him. But he came in once with a girl, and I was talking to her, and um, she, she did. She, I said, "Oh, well, do you do that as well?" And she said, "Yeah, blah blah blah." Anyway, and she's. I said, um. I was asking about dating. I can't remember what the answers were now. But she said, oh, she said, it's funny, like, when you... Because I was thinking questions when I was talking. It was so interesting. And I said, what's it like? Do you know when there's, like, a the first time somebody's done it? And you, she said, yeah, you can tell. You do. And she said, she said, after a few times, she said, um, 
you see the sort of light go behind the guy's eyes where exactly. now they're just going through them. When they start, they're still trying to be nice. He said, oh, eventually it just goes and they're just, they're glassy eyed and they're just doing it to whatever. And I thought, oh God, that, the light goes. I remember that. The light goes. Me, the light goes from behind the eyes, just doing it. I'm just doing something to somebody. It, I mean, that's how it is. And now back in, going back 20 odd years ago, you know, I actually think the men were just phenomenal because they used to be able to keep an erection, do the scenes and have to stay erect even during camera and light changes and then the director would shout down 10 9 8 and they have to do a pop shot on yeah. like you know when it gets to one and well, i'm like there must be emotions that, yeah. for a fella you've got to get the unless you just test off thrones just through the roof no right so in my era we used to have a rapport with i mean i got oh, in a very right. fortunate position where being so at the top of my game i was able to choose who i worked with so i had a you know kind of my whole circle of who I would perform with but you get to know them you know you know them and you've got a rapport and you have a laugh and it's all about and then making the scene is great fun and you know you're trying to write fuck one right, another yeah. I mean that, that's you know I'm a, I'm a, I'll take on a challenge that's yeah. me and that's how it used to be it was it was great because you got on with your yeah. uh, work colleagues where in today's it's like okay it's all mechanical Right. Mm. But back then, they never used to inject their penises. They never used to take hey, Viagra. Ooh. Yeah. Could you just rewind that? <laughs> what, what do you mean inject? So in today's society, men inject their penises with something called Trimax. Right. What's and that? And that, that keeps you erect. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a needle? A needle. Oh, for the oh. love of so God. it goes in the base of your penis. So I think what that people have to take sense. into consideration, yeah. if they chose to enter into the industry... That is then an inject point within the base of the penis and sexual, sexually transmitted diseases, including blood diseases, yeah. um, are then at a risk yeah. because they've got an open wound at the base of and their penis sex. Yeah. and having sex with them. Are they able to, like, you know, perform and... and and ejaculate. Eja eja yeah, ejaculate at the Don't end. Don't be shy of that. I know, way. I know. Like, <laughs> That's how babies are made. Yeah. My mum's like, my mum's like, my mum's listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how babies are made. Yeah, yeah no, uh, yeah. Can they ejaculate afterwards? Yes, they can. Yeah. 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 But there's some men that really, really struggle. And there is such a thing as a stunt cock. Mm. Okay, a lot of people are like, really? Are there fluffers? <laughs> are there yeah. stunt cocks? Mm. Yes. Mm. You know, there are. Because, you know, I've been on a lot of sets where maybe the guy would have been new and he could, he could keep an erection up, but he couldn't um, ejaculate on demand. Right, yeah. mm. I mean, so they would have a stunt cock, yeah. or they'd have a little trick. Like ready waiting in the, yeah. <laughs> in or the, in the, the corner. There's <laughs> another real good trick that they used to use, is a man's penis would be out of shot, and the girl's there going, ah, oh, give it to me. And they'd, they'd mix a cast of sugar and water. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if I'm uh, happy or I sad. Just, and then it, was it just ruined, ruined, for, yeah. ruined and, it for me now. <laughs> and you always know when that happens because the girls will be going, mmm, that's oh, right. lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I, bet oh, it yeah. I bet it tasted lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other time, they're like... <laughs> 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 would, he, would he still get paid then for that? Was, and, yeah, of course, because he's been hired for the day. So. <laughs> And, you know, oh, you've been hired yeah. for a day, mate. Or yeah. a, it's such so. lies for real life because you'd be like, but they, they look like they're loving it. But yeah. when it happens to me, it doesn't taste like that. Is there a, what they need the... to drink drink Guinness yeah. and eat cherries. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. It's a little trick. <laughs> yeah. is, there a, is there a pay gap difference between the men and the women? Huge. Oh, which way? So um, the women are, you know, you take the woman out of porn, there's no porn apart from gay So porn. the men get less. But surely the pressure's more on a man. You must have a smaller pool. I'm in agreement. Yeah. Always, you can't have as many men, nothing. surely, that can do that than women. Exactly. For a woman, we can fake an orgasm. Yeah, so, Every woman's mm. done it in their life. But there is a clear difference. It's a not a like... very, very clear. You know, the women are taking it and it's easy to fake an orgasm, you yeah. know. You know but I mean, to find I'm sure men. you've done it. Oh and if you gosh. haven't, you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> but I've there, there it. Must be, there must be... A, not many men that can do that. That's that's an ask. In my era, when they weren't using Trimix or oh, Viagra okay. or any other kind oh, of injection, sort of um, there was very few men. And I used to think it was really um, wrong that the guys were paid so much less than yeah. the females. I mean, we, and you know, you're making, it depends whether you're working in Europe, America or England. In England, the going rate for a boy-girl scene was £300. But the guy would may get fifty pounds. No, it's no. that massive. But it's, surely they can't get that many people to do it. That's all yeah, the that's desperation. Got, that's got to be a talent because it's a real the, talent. Before the injections, before Viagra, how are they able to keep it up? Or did you have like a fluffer or is look? Is, you know, when you're a porn actress and you're working with the guy, you will help them the best you can. Yeah, but 
you know, not every guy can do it, as you know. I mean, there used to be a show in my in my era of working in the industry called Porn Idol. Mm. And wow, yeah, and so we'd have to be there with you know, it's a thing, and it's, like it's a, a reality model. show, yeah. Oh. And it's like, like Simon Cowell, yeah, it's a bit <laughs> like so it was, it was a nightmare because you didn't know who was coming on to set, right? And I was like, you know, I'd learned many tricks by then, yeah, and you like, it could be anybody, you could write in and become, as long as you're tested and it may become condom or not, um, then you can come on and you know, have sex with a, with a porn star to see if you could become, you know, good in the job. But I was really good. I mean, there's little tricks that I knew that if you if you, if you you squeeze two fingers at the base of the penis, you can stop the blood flow going through. They're never going to get hard on. You've never got to do a scene. Oh, <laughs> no. And then, <laughs> do, you must get a load of guys applying, just like, oh, I'll do that. Oh, my God, there was hundreds of but you. But there's oh, no yeah, way of <laughs> training them. Like, it's just straight into the well, job. Well, no, I mean, every man... Looks at porn. When I'm going to say every man, you, there's, there's three, four sat in this room, so maybe we can have a look. <laughs> and, and every man who watches porn, you know, thinks, oh, God, yeah. I could be a porn I star. I could do that. Yeah, but there's no that. way to know. Look, there's nothing that happens before the film starts for their first time. That... No, not at all. I mean, they've had, they've had a wank at home or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's pre- how, many, how many films have gone down the pan? Because you go, this is just some bloke. Well, it doesn't because, you know, you've got humour porn. You know, like porn idol was humorous. Right. So a man can sit at home and go, yeah, he can't do it, but I bet I could. Okay. So then they're writing. And then you had like, you know, you got to remember, so you had the... TVX and um, the adult channel and stuff come in around, you know, the same era that the internet came out. Yeah. And so there was lots more production. So they were the ones who were producing Porn Idol for the adult channel. And <laughs> You know what I have in my head? I just have America's Next Top Porn Star <laughs> in my head. <laughs> well, go, go 20 years ahead and it would just be on yeah, MTV. Like it would just be. Yeah. Oh, well, I was on a judge once <laughs> on a set in America and it was... Um, Gosh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was with Seymour Butt's uncle, Seymour. cousin Stevie, mm. um, and he was on a major reality show in the UK for s- several series, and we had to judge them on performance, you know, squirting distance and all this stuff. Squirting distance. <laughs> yeah, and I am literally just sat there with a friend who I'm still with friends friends yeah. with today, and I'd retired by then, and I was like, I don't even know what I can judge on, you know, it's, it's just so yeah. stupid. Yeah. But, you know, we had to crown a winner, and... You know, <laughs> when, when you go on to a film set f- to do a scene, have you met the guy before? As I said, in my in my yeah, case, okay. I'd reached a level where I was yeah. able to choose who I worked oh, right. for. Okay. Now, most no at the beginning of my um, career, well, my first ever my first ever performance actually um, was with a major company called Private. And I'd never performed. I just knew I was good at sex. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'd had some experience in my personal life of experimental yeah. sex and I was very happy with my sexuality. But I'd got there and this woman walked out with a dog going, hi, Leanne. She was 60 years old with a Labrador yeah. mm. in this country matching house. And I'm thinking, what is going on? Yeah. And then I go inside and then um, there's somebody else going, hi, do you want coffee? And I'm like, okay. And then the two guys on the film equipment were about 50 and I was like okay so what's you know where's the stud and they went we oh, are no. the studs <laughs> and I and that's a proper company it wasn't like a private no thing. major yeah. ma- private was a number one oh, company major. within Europe and I was like oh my god um and they said don't worry you know this is a scenario you've missed an audition you need to give us a sexual favor for us to put you through yeah. and I was like okay Oh my god, my first ever I mean, I'm yeah. with good at body angles, but yeah. you know, in fact I look at it now, I mean I'm because I'm writing my life story right, yeah, for yeah. It, something. And it was a case of actually I looked my ass looked really good on that. <laughs> you oh, know? you still see it now? Oh you yeah, still it's still it. online. People are weird and it's still up. It's still there. online. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're saying. Yeah. I sent I get sent so many internet things, um, say for, through, you know, X so Twitter. Yeah. I'm still going, Oh my god, I still have your favourite scene. Another performer from America only yesterday sent me the the picture from that exact shoot and said, I still miss you. And I'm like, Jesus. Is there nothing legally that you could do nowadays to say, look, you can't just sell this now. That contract is not valid. No. It's, it's just, when, because it be something. when you make a porn movie, you have to produce two, form, two, two photo uh, verifications of your ID to prove your date of birth yeah. and age and stuff. And then you sign a contract. You know, when you're, when you're a young mother... 
or a young woman or man, you're just thinking, Pay, give me the paycheck. So you don't yeah, read I thought through nowadays it. somebody must be able to go, look, you're 18, it's 19, mm. that's not all, you can't keep... Doing. That would oh. just come down to morals right. now. Um, you can't. I mean, you can get, um, the, with the new GDPR, um, you can ask to be the right to be forgotten. Oh, okay. So you can have that online and you could... You could I'd be there all day because, of, you know, it's on several websites and third-party websites right. and right. there's yeah, no yeah, way. Of course, yeah. So... You know, I learned many years ago to embrace it because I know a lot of former performers from my era that it's destroyed their life. Yeah. You know, they can't do the job they wanted to do or they couldn't become a musician because of their past. And, you know, there was a lot of avenues stopped and I thought, I'm not going to allow that to happen to me. Yeah. So I just tell the truth about the industry. Yeah. I'm not a victim um, of the industry. I chose to go in. I wasn't forced into it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. How do your kids... Um, do they support you? Was... Yeah, look, now now is a completely different story. Yeah. Back then, you know, I had to do a lot of um, diverting the truth. Yeah. So that was hard. And then when my son went to school, especially to secondary school, they're like, your mum's famous. And he's like, you know, he, you know, he was too young to understand. And this one guy bullied him at school. And my, you know, and I don't know if anybody's aware, but I'm pretty clued up on a, on legal stuff. And you know, if I was signing my son over to a school between eight thirty and three thirty, they legally have an obligation to protect my child, no matter what circumstances. So now, after the first time he got attacked for, for me and my career pass, um, I went into the school. I said, "Look, okay, you've already breached your contract." I said, "One more time, and I'll see you in a courtroom." And it happened again about a week later. So I took his school to court as long as alongside the pupil. And I had the police backing me out because they went, well, yeah, because legally, if you didn't send your child to school yeah. because you signed that contract, you would be fined mm. and also be punished. And this, what people don't realize is that the schools have a contract to protect your child. That you have. So their duty of care is. It's a duty of care. And then right. the, and they, they breached it. So I took them mm. to court. And my son got compensation. The child got removed from the school. And a lot of the wow. te te teachers got retrained. That's and brilliant. I'm so yeah. glad. Because I, I won't take it, it so seriously. Well, I mean, by then as well, I mean, I'd retired and I'd gone into sex education uh, with the Family Planning Association. And. You know, everybody's got a past. There is something that each one of us, even <laughs> sat in this room or listening, are going to say, you know, yes, I've done this and I hope to God that never gets out. There yeah. is going to be something, whether it was wanking at work and you don't want your boss known, I mean, that's a 74% percent rate that men masturbate at work. Just no. So you know, yeah, it's a huge... You can't be told you this one. Oh, my God. It's a huge well, number. In the toilets or, you know... Yeah. At work, though. <laughs> or maybe that might be the fetish. Yeah. That might be... Yeah. Well, no, it's, a, it's a regular thing, men get... You know, oh. erection several times a day. Yeah. Um, so th there's many things that people are hiding in their lives. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just chose because I didn't have the best upbringing, and I don't chat to members of my family now, um, and that's just due, due to their respect yeah. of me and their constant um, attacking on me. When in reality, once I look, when, once I realise, I'm only accept. You know, I'm only. You know, I only have to accept my actions and yeah. my reactions. They're the only two things I'm in charge of. You're like the Harry and Meghan of the royal family. Mm. Like, you're, yeah. the, you're the other one. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> they call you Harry. Oh, he's Harry. <laughs> oh, you can you can call me Harry. Yeah. <laughs> did you yeah. well, after the first time you did it, the film? Did you were you uh, looking back now? Were you any different afterwards? I don't think so. No, no really. No. I remember. Is that confident? I've had great conversations. I mean, I'm 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 in talks with a major director, um, who actually who actually called Dominique, who actually was a director on the Halloween movies. So you know, I was having meetings with him only two days ago, and he's like, "Your life is extraordinary." And he goes, "When do you think that you evolved in life?" And I said, um, "I evolved when I joined pornography, when I've done something that I wanted to do." Yeah, yeah. and. You know, a lot of people, you know, I was I was very wise. You know, I wasn't stupid enough to go in there and think, oh, my God, you know, I need a new Gucci handbag and a new pair of heels, yeah. which a lot of people yeah. do. I was like, right, OK, so I'm, here's a two year business plan. This is what I'm going to do. I know I learned far more about consent in the porn industry than I did outside. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Consent was constantly spoken about. Outside the industry, there was nobody in school talking about consent. My parents didn't. They were like, oh, just don't let somebody touch your body. Yeah. You know, they're not talking about consent. Consent comes in many ways, whether it, 
you know, where, no matter how it is, consent, if they're in your boundary and you haven't said yes or no, they have no right. They have to wait for you. Were you able to, how long were you involved with it? Well, a few as, years. As a performer yeah. in the industry, yeah. just over two years. What, were you able to date? No, yeah. I, I chose not to. I think that would be different. Chose not to. Mm. For me personally, I felt that I wouldn't, it would be totally unfair because I wouldn't want a partner going and sleeping with other people. So yeah, why would I expect but him to... what's ex the general relationship status of people? It, does they, do they tend to date them, each other? Like, yeah, there's a lot of dating right. one another. And there's a lot of marriages within the industry, yeah. um, successful relationships. Um, and some people, you know, I know a beautiful... Um, performer in the uk who's got a very supportive um husband um and it's like their agreement it's they actually i mean I've, I've sat and had dinner with them and i've asked many questions myself because there's no way i could have done that um but they're, they're really they're really happy yeah. and as long as this you keep in work, contact with a lot of people um i've kept in contact i mean because after my retirement because they um you know, I, I mean, as you're aware, I mean, I was raped by Ron Jeremy. Um, and I'm happy to talk about that. So don't worry about that. And so after that, that, that kind of helped me leave the industry. Because to me, I was just like, I'm not protected. Had you made the money that you want? Did you did it come out financially the way you wanted? Yeah, absolutely. So it worked. Well, I was no longer surrounded by drug dealers and right. criminals yeah. living on a council estate. So it estate. worked. It served its purpose. It served its oh, purpose. Okay. Absolutely. So what, what did you do straight after? Took a rest. Yeah, I was going to say, did you have a gap? <laughs> yeah, damn, yeah. I took a rest. Yeah. But then I met I met a partner, and, yeah. you know, and he, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, everything's hunky-dory, but I do remember... <laughs> God, this is embarrassing. So the internet was right at the, you know... Right, yeah. Infancy. Did you start getting nervous when the internet came along? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I met this guy. He yeah. was a top Did he end. know about... No, I told him I was a body double for Demi oh, Moore. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to lie, why not just make it... A big one. <laughs> so, I love yeah, that. Well, I used to work I in Hollywood as a, as, a, as a body double. So, and at that stage, you know, people used to compare me to Demi all the time, so I was able to pull it off. Yeah. And he was like, cool. And what did he do? He's a major property developer okay. in London. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I had to go to Amsterdam, and it was going to be my last ever movie. And I knew that it was going to be a fetish movie. Um, I knew I was working with, I was thinking, right, okay, I've only just met him. You know, it's early February. I'm going in four weeks' time. You know, I'm, oh, right. I just tell him it's a photo shoot, okay? You know, and it's just a body double photo shoot. You know, again, it's the internet. I didn't think it was going to come yeah. out that fast. <clears throat> he said, oh, I'll meet you afterwards if you want. And I thought, what, in Amsterdam? And he said, yeah. And so I said to all my work colleagues over models, I said, look, he wants to meet me on the last day. I sort of told him it's just a photo shoot. So if all you guys meet him, it was addressed. <laughs> like photo shoot. We were doing an advert or something, or we're all body doubles. I don't care what you say. You, you just don't please back me up. <laughs> yeah, back me up. He, it's a new partner, and you know. Yeah. Anyway, so I met him. We hung in his hotel, and then he said, "Look, I've just got to pop down to the internet. Um, I've got a work email. I've got to check." And I said, "Okay." He goes, "Oh, come with me. We'll go for coffee after." I went, "Okay." You know, just thinking, love dove. Didn't think nothing of it. And then he sat down and I got sat on a chair next to him and he he like had to do an email and I said, Cool, and he goes, Oh, he goes, I, I know how we can get to know each other better. And he put his name into the Google. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> and then he literally turned around to me and said, Oh, it's your turn. Oh, no. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way of escaping. Think, how that. can I misspell my name? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm oh, sat Google. in this cafe. How dare you? Thank God it was Amsterdam. <laughs> right. right. And I put it in and he just looked at me and like, and I just went, oh God, I'm so embarrassed. And he goes, this is what I'd already checked her out. Oh. <laughs> no, He'd no. already Googled you. <laughs> oh my God. And then he said to me, how did the photo shoot done? I went, oh great. You know? I knew you were lying. Um, no, 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 no. At that time, oh. he thought it was, you know, he thought it was just a photo shoot. Anyway, like six months later... <laughs> We're walking around the adult convention in Olympia. I didn't think nothing of it. I just thought, oh, you know, you might see the odd box cover of me or whatever. And he said, yeah, of course. And we're walking around the Olympia and I'm thinking, why is everybody staring? I don't know what's going on. You know, I've made lots of movies, but yeah. normally they don't stare this much. And then I saw somebody, another producer goes, oh, my God, you look amazing. And I was like, oh, cheers. Oh, he said, no. no, on the posters. And I went, what posters? <laughs> 
and he took me around to the stand. He said, that last photo shoot you done in. (laughs) 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 This whole stand. The blood drain from (laughs) your Um, oh, darling, so about that oh, photo this shoot. Is so <laughs> embarrassing. So this whole stand was dedicated to me. And you had floor-to-ceiling yeah. posters and, oh, my God, and no. me in positions and, like, doing sexual <gasps> oh, no. acts. And I had to say to him, I'm so sorry. And he goes, don't we? He goes, look, we've been together about four weeks. Mm. I'll let you off that. Is there anything yeah, else yeah. that I need to yeah. know about? In fact, there wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you have to go through all this stages yeah is there anything else uh, what more oh, than that has no. he, <laughs> no, no, trust me that is it has yeah. he ever watched any of the videos of you of mine yeah i've had to for research reasons mm-hmm. um you know so over the years like i actually years ago got offered a book deal from random house and they, but they wanted it to be a misery memoir mm. and although i've been through some difficult stages and some most horrendous situations i don't think my life's a misery memoir um, so I refused the deal because mm. they wanted me to keep out the wrong stuff and keep out too much stuff, which is the base of the book. Um, and so for this re- research project that, you know, I've had to go through loads of my work to hand over to this, uh, you know, for the, to this famous director who wants to turn my life into a Netflix series. And so I've had to find, you know, my work and send it over to him and I, I'm like he goes I don't need to see all the hardcore stuff don't worry about that it's more about what my image was my attitude on set yeah, yeah, yeah. so I've, I have had to look at them um, and for me it's a third person yeah you know I, I can actually see it as if I'm watching a different person perform yeah, yeah, because yeah. obviously we all evolve in life. But I mean, it's so drastic mm. change. Is, you know, Has your partner? Did your partner watch? It, oh, I'm it? single now. Oh, a partner at the time. Did he? Did he watch? It um, well? I hope not. No. <laughs> no. I mean, every near enough every partner I've actually had. There's. I say if they said they watched my stuff, I'm kind of put off. Yeah. Because what happened to him it, then? Because you got through that. How oh, long yeah, did it did. last for? Mm. Well, he. Um, it lasted for two and a half years, but. Oh, okay. You know, Just general when, relationships. Yeah, okay. yeah. But I think, you know, for him, he knew my past. He knew who I was. He knew that there was a lot of interest to get my story. Um, and he became very insecure and jealous oh. and couldn't yeah. handle that when we were out, I'd get all this attention and then he'd want me to dress like this. Mm. We'd fight. He stole my passport. Every, oh, you know. my God. That was did a bit of a jump. Did you have to perform? Like, so obviously, if he had seen any of your work. Well, you do. You've got yeah. to perform as, did, did as you, a partner. Yeah. Did you? Was he like, well, she's, oh, she's not making any of the noises that she normally does on the videos. <gasps> oh. Is there, is there something, is there something wrong yeah. with me? Like, yeah. you know, she's silent. But it's because you're actually having an... Yeah. I'm enjoying it. But yeah, you're actually having yeah. an orgasm. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I've, I've actually never been a quiet person, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I've had complaints from many neighbours. Really? Do you yeah. do you have on your videos and when you're performing? Did you actually have any orgasms? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have called myself an actress yeah. <laughs> because I was just performing. <laughs> so you weren't switching off. No, I no. loved every. I, I'm pretty. So you're not really much, acting. Yeah. No, I enjoyed everything. Well, that's brilliant. They were. I mean, I think they. People watching and they want to know that you're actually having a good time. I was having a great time. You know, in every consensual thing that I took part in within pornography, don't get me wrong, there's there's some that I look back thinking, oh my God, um, I should never have done that. But I did. And in that stage of my life, that's the attitude I had. But no, I, I don't have anything I look at and say, oh my God, I shouldn't have really done, uh, you know, that I regret that or... But I, I was never faking either. I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, people now are probably saying, man, that that that, that sex performance got ADHD or something <laughs> because I was wild, right? I was wild. But I wasn't on drugs. I wasn't on alcohol. I just had a very healthy sexual appetite. Some people want to be an athlete. Some people wish to be something else. Mm. For me, you know, I was just very good at this particular job mm. and very adaptable. Um do I feel I was taken advantage in some situa- situations? Absolutely. And there's one series that I can't actually watch. And um, they used to be a former agent. And when I left them, they actually sent the Russian mafia after me <gasps> because I'd left them. And I was in America and I was in a, I was like, why are you sending them, the Russian mafia after me? They go, because you left us and went to a different agent. Oh, wow. And so I'm how like, did you get out of that? I barricaded the house up. 
Just let it pass. Yeah, yeah. I had some good friends in America who just said, right, let them try and come here. We'll take them on. And about six months later, I met one of the Russian guys actually at the AVN Awards in Vegas. And I said, he goes, I know you. And I said, well, how the hell do you know me? He goes, I was the one that they had called to say, you know, we want you to go and do some damage to this girl. And he goes, but then I asked him what damage they wanted done. He goes, well, she stole a girlfriend's pair of shoes. I don't have no reason to steal. I'm on serious money. Right, yeah. She's a size three, I'm a size six. So it was down to me leaving them. Mm. And I had a real good chat with this like mafia guy. And he went, he goes, I totally believe you. Yeah. What well, a crap lie to make up. <laughs> no, like, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, really it's crap. I know. If you're going to send a Russian mean, I've not ripped off, you know, I've never done any criminal activity. Yeah. Before, none whatsoever. Um, so to be put in that position, you had people who tried to control you mm. and you had to be strong to not be controlled. Yeah, yeah. But any, I remember I'd done a, a, like a Surrey road trip with him and I actually cannot watch that because he would get me when I was in a mood of a sexual high and that's the best time to take advantage of someone. You know, oh, that's right. what the, how they see it. Um, but it's, it makes a person far more vulnerable if they're already in their high. Um, and when I look at it, I'm like, he should never have done that. Um, but, and I, that's one I really, really can't watch. I would never review it. I would... Um, yeah. Um, but that's not bad to have that one moment yeah. out of the yeah, whole I mean, lot. That was, you've done all right to... Did you have protection at the time? Did you have, like, anyone... If I went to a British set, I had a driver okay. come with me. Yeah. And um, he would be there reading a newspaper. A couple of times it was upside down, but he was still reading the newspaper. <laughs> He's just like looking yeah. over the newspaper. <laughs> but, um, yes, either... A few eye holes. In yeah, him. yeah. You know, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> So, yes, on, on when I first got into the industry, you know, a very, he's still a very good friend of mine called Jason Mascor. He managed me and he used to go to set with me. It was fantastic. Um, and then I got myself a driver so that you are um, on set and protected. You've got protection there. However, there were a few such as there's, there's one producer um, called, um, oh, Su their, their actual surname is Sutcliffe. Yeah, I know, it's quite scary. And there was all these rumours that he was related to Peter Sutcliffe. He wasn't. Um, yeah. And he wouldn't let any of your friends or colleagues go into that room. And that's the only time I felt really uneasy. Yeah. And yes, he tried to get me to further than I was willing. But yeah. as I said to you, the industry taught, taught, you know, educated me on boundaries. Mm. So my boundaries, I knew not to cross. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't feel pressured by it. And yeah, is there any a time when you've gone in and you've said you like no, hundred percent, I'm not doing this? Um, many, many, yeah. Because and what, what was their reaction? Well, the first time when you get onto an agency and they're like this, the ones I just spoke about with the road trip, um, they'd send you to a to a movie that you're doing that day, and you turn up, and I was just doing bo you know regular boy girl intercourse sex or girl girl intercourse sex. Um, and then you turn up to this director and you say, oh, it's actually, you're booked for an angel. Um, an angel? <laughs> I, an, an anal thing. I said, well, I don't do anal yet. And he's like, well, if you don't do anal, then I'm, you're going to have to pay for the whole shoot that's been wasted. <laughs> no. I never gave in. I was quite happy yeah. to walk out. And I did on several occasions. But there's many people who gave in. Right, And yeah. ba basically, you know, they were coerced. It's like, black, it's like blackmail. Well, it's, it's coercion. Coercion, yeah. Yeah, they were, you know, put into a situation which yeah. now, that would never, that it's, it's illegal. You cannot yeah. coerce somebody <clears throat> and pressure them into taking part, especially on any kind of act, act whether it's an anal or digital or anything. Um, yeah. But the, that, that particular agent did not care for me. And... Then you go, you know, I, I managed to go to America and leave the British industry. And then you really were educated on boundaries, specific health care. They had their own health care system. Mm. And it was far better. Did they, sorry, did they, because is it like a big community for like porn porn actors? Do they, do, if, you, if you had a producer like that, would that be a, bl a black mark against their name? Would yes. you tell everybody else, be like, look, don't use him because... You know, he did this Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I work, you know, I volunteer beside a union in the United States called APAG, run by Alana Evans. And I have done for several years. And with their union, you know, the, you know, the performers pay like a $5 fee per month or something. But we've got lawyers, counsellors, oh, yeah. you know, available 24-7. And... Yes, absolutely. Mm. And I have no shame in blacklisting anybody. If that yeah. black We've got social media as well now. You can just get oh. on social media and that's mm. the end of the career. No, no, no. Not, oh, no. not so quick on that one. So 
you know, after the wrong case or during the wrong case, there was a lot of girls going online and accusing other performers of, you know, being violent or rough or not stopping when they were told no. But they were putting it all out on social media. So I used to, tr I used to try and say to the girls, you put this out on a public thing, you're waiting to get sued for defamation. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. And not only that, you've um, now um, negatively impacted any future case you may want to bring. Um, because, you know, if you're going out online and doing something, you, are, it's, you know, it's like, hold on a second. Yeah. So I, I try to pull them back. But I'll be honest with you, not everybody is 100% mentally stable within the industry. And especially Twitter, there's, there's, there's many girls that will join forces and cause a lot of drama online. And I... I, it, I privately message them and say look let's bring you back in mm. yeah do you want to talk do you need some help do they think because if they did go forward they won't be listened to so they think well i'm gonna go online loads of people are gonna see it and this person is gonna i'll get the masses on them you know i'll get them cancelled or uh, is that not really i think you know the industry in america is massive yeah so i think that unless you're surrounded because you become who you're surrounded by mm. you know and there's certain agents and um, mentalities there's a whole different you know variety of mentalities um, that if they don't believe in the union because they'd have to pay five dollars a month they are like oh well I don't want somebody telling me what's right or wrong you know there's a lot of rebellion mm. you yeah. know that happens and um, and then you've got some other girls that will encourage one another mm. and you know they want to go online and belittle somebody and I'm like please don't do that because I wonder if they think it's more casual than it, it, they think it's casual to just go online and, and you go, no, do you understand what you're entering into? What you're into? That's, you might as well print that in a newspaper if you're putting it online. It's that serious. Well, it's probably but worse so to put to it, it online. Yeah. yeah. And I think because, you know, we, we have since the Me Too movement, mm. then, it, then I've watched it go on and on and on and on with people making accusations online. And I'm thinking, please do not do that because, oh, yeah. you know, you can't because, you know, I, I work beside the Met Police and I work beside the NHS. So, you know, we there are certain measures that you can weaken your case. Mm. And oh, what otherwise. do you think about the, um, it's very topical, what do you think about the Russell Brand thing at the moment? Because obviously with the uh, Channel 4 have released dispatches and they've got five women that have come forward. Look, do you think is I've not that, watched the, uh, uh, right, I've not watched the documentary and I've not read the newspapers. Mm. Um, I d actually don't really listen to the media yeah. um, because I think it's exaggerated and they coerce people into talking. Now, so it would be unfair for me to comment either way. What do you think about going out and doing documentaries like that, having people on? Do you, Is that a good way of going about it or is that no, sort because of just putting stuff online? Look, you've got journalists going out, taking, yeah. on, taking on a counselling role, taking on a criminal role. Yeah. Um, you know, by making out if you come forward and do this and the police will protect you and all stuff like this. No journalist has a right. They are not qualified in the criminal justice system and they are not qualified in counselling. So I feel that they are the ones abusing these victims by getting them to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I will always think that because, you know, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd go to the Ron Jeremy comment now. I never went public before I was approached by the American, um, you know, like legal system and because it had already been exposed into the LA Times because... Oh, really? I wonder if then, yeah, if something happens in the news and they think, right, go and speak to everyone that he has ever met yeah. and see... Well, there, there were so many people that knew about my incident with Ron Jerry mm. um, from that industry. So what the LA Times had done is they had done an investigation and I'm still friends with the LA Times. They're great people. They've really looked after me, actually. And then they go, your name's come up. Can we chat to you? And I said, look, is it going to keep the bastard in jail? Yeah. If, you know, there's, there was only like seven people at that time and there was a chance he was going to get out. And I was like, do you know what? I've wanted this for many years. And I've always spoken quite, you know, amongst friends what happened. And he said, you know, we've had good insight. Would you be willing to talk to us? And I said, OK, um, because I'm a counsellor for the industry. It was going to be very unethical for me not to really talk about it. And to be honest with you, I was ready to go public with it. And as soon as I did, then um, I got approached by, um, the, by the criminal justice system going, can we interview you? And they needed, you know, 
for people to, to go into a court, to in, to be involved in a court case, it's not just done on you, what you say. You know, mm. so me giving them my side of the story, they don't they don't decide to press charges just because of what they've listened to. Mm. You know, I had to give them a list of people who over the last two decades I've spoken to about it. You know, friends, you know, confidants. And they had to ring people from all over the world because I, there were several people, um, even some I don't even speak to anymore, but I still had to contact and go, oh, you know, can these can you chat to these investigators? Um, I can't tell you what it's about. And they're like, sure. Um, so they had to get evidence from other people to say, mm -hmm. right, is there a strong enough case? And then, you know, after interviewing with them and them having all their gathered evidence, you know, that they finally said to me, you know, we're, we're actually charging him. And so it's, you know, if somebody is, these documentaries don't always help a case. Yeah. And in fact, you know, I, I've worked in mainstream media many times and I advise anybody from the adult industry, before you work with them, you please just talk to me so that, you know, because I yeah, understand it's them. A, it's not an ethical thing. They're not trying to right a wrong in society. No. They're trying to make money from advertising. Yeah, that's, by what gonna, that's what I was going to say. Like, how would you advise people in the industry at the moment to, if anything does happen to them? What would you advise them to do? Okay, so most people would be like, the police won't listen to them because they walk to a front desk. I've made, I'm, I opened up <clears> an avenue between the porn industry and the sexual violence unit at the Met Police so that girls don't have to, girl, girls or guys don't have to do that. Mm. Um, they can actually either contact me directly and I can get them, the police to be plain clothes to meet in a public place or even at my house. Um, so I can't believe, you know, I still find it quite shocking that I was the one who had to do that and that was only about four or five years ago. So why, yeah. I just... People have never taken sex workers seriously, where in fact, you know, they could probably work, walk into many banks and say, right, you need to do the marketing this way. You need to do the account system this way. Mm. You need to do what? this. Is they, they were scared. I mean, I was scared, you know, all those years ago I, because Ron had um, inside contacts with the LAPD. And plus the porn industry has said to me, what if you talk about if you they're not going to listen to you. Mm. You're a porn actress mm. and you're overseas in America. And, you know, and that's how it was. And so um, I was due in Vegas to sign my autograph and then I came back to England and never went back. Yeah. Is um, your House of Ardent? So yeah. That's your website. Your email address is on there. Um, so what is it you're trying to do with that? The Gordian Knot. Yeah, I was going to ask you yeah. yeah. The Gordian Knot's fantastic. Mm. So I was approached by the NHS um, probably about two years ago now. And it was, it was somebody who worked very high up in the sexual prevention um, unit. And they said, you know, I don't know if you're aware of the sexual predatory behavior and abuse of the NHS on the sexual side. I said, no, not at all. And I said, but how did you get my number? And they goes, oh, we researched you. And I'm like, so you don't work beside the Met Police like I do and involved in all the meetings? And they went, no. It turned out this woman who's head of, uh, in, in, in her jurisdiction, head of uh, violence, she was actually a detective who took down Levi Belfield. Oh, yeah. So she had a police background. And she knew I worked with the police. And she said, you're the leading woman in the UK that I want to take on board. And uh, so we've done some talks with the NHS. And now, you know, each department in child protection and safeguarding, they were like, can you put together a series? So we put together the Gordian Knot mm. for the NHS. And now it's getting outsourced to children's homes. And, and you, it's, and it's about advice. School? Do you go to school? Is there a like into the education system? Right. I'm not allowed to go into school because of my past. It's ridiculous. Mm. And in fact, you know, I mean, I could sit here actually and I could tell you how bad some of the production companies are, mainstream productions. So, you know, I don't need to mention the name. You'll probably know where it is. I was doing a show called um, Sex Education. And mm. they asked me to go in because children are being spoken to about for the show about <clears throat> pornography and I said okay that's great if you've spoken to them and briefed them then I don't mind coming in and being part of the program and they put me at the front of the class and they said right children this is the next porn star do you have any questions <gasps> no I'm like I, I, I just felt so sorry for the children and I just said look you need to cut that yeah. well, what are they going to ask I said what yeah. are they gonna ask? Well, I mean it also took me back to my young days of being in the sex education class you know like how to make babies um, people saying, does anybody have any questions? I mean, which young yeah. child is yeah. going to put their hand up and say, yeah. well, actually, can you tell me when I look at porn how this really happens? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. No. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and discuss the matter that a TV journalist has decided to try and cover. How old, how old were the kids? 
Paul about 11. I didn't even know about porn when I was in. Well, no, did I? Was, I. <laughs> I and I became 11. the queen of. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be like, what, 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 what food porn? What, what yeah. are you on about? Is that the, like, yeah, is that the M- <laughs> M&S desserts, love? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of abuse mm. to the industry. You know, a lot of the abuse that I see comes directly from the mainstream investigators and journalists. And I'm not saying anybody's guilty or not guilty. And I will look after absolutely any victim. And I will stop any crime or deal with any crime that gets sent my way. Um, and I just think the abuse is happening from outside the industry, thinking, well, these people are vulnerable anyway and they don't give a shit about their lives and their selves. And it's wrong. It's got mm. to stop. Yeah. Um, so the, I do the NHS stuff and then um, I'm involved in the first ever major research pro- uh, project through the, the Gordian Knot is... Um, so there's a, a very famous um, UK top surgeon um, in um, anal injuries. Mm. So, and she, um, you know, Leslie Hunt, I met her through the Gordian Knot. And there's a lot of injuries turning up in A&E by young women with anal injuries because they, people are copying stuff from porn yeah. because what they're not seeing on a porn movie is the preparation that goes on yeah. beforehand. I mean, we didn't just go on to set and a guy say, hey, we're going to do anal sex mm. and push it in. It doesn't work like that. No. Not as a professional. You need to be prepped and you need to have the right lubrications right. and everything. But the young girls aren't seeing that and they're doing anal sex and turning up and getting rectum in- injuries. It's really bad. Mm. And prolapses and stuff. So we're now, she said to me, can you help me put together a research project? And I said, you know, it's, it's not only just for the NHS, but for education purposes and for younger generations going on and on for decades to come. Absolutely, of course I will. And um, I'm actually recruiting. Um, well, first I'm starting with 12 major adult stars who do anal sex for a living, who do it professionally. Mm. Got them on board and then I've got other um, people who perform anal sexes and maybe they might be a sex worker or stuff and they're going to get screened and have cameras put inside them to see if there's any injuries about the long-term damage or whether doing it professionally and correctly um, can prevent injuries and then uh, what I would like to see is that you know just like any other mainstream film this this movie um, was made with professional actors performers and shouldn't be shot at home if you don't know what you're doing basically. I think it definitely should like the education with with kids and stuff, it it's not just het- heterosexual. Sorry, I'm saying the word heterosexual. Het- heterosexual sex anymore. You know, there's other sex out there, and especially that anal. It's not it's not talked about at all. It's not talked about. It's in it's, and the injuries and yeah. the cost. The co- I mean, you know, there's a lot of abuse within the NHS, but mm. they're also picking up the bill for a lot of uneducated children. Exp- yeah. You know, and even with you know, they're they're, they're paying. Um, for any sex work with STI, um, you know, a, a, a assignment maybe, um, testing, um, before they can go to work, that's all free. But if they pick up chlamydia or gonorrhea or anything on set, then they go back to the NHS and they're getting free prescription to get their drugs. So the NHS are actually very entwined with the porn industry mm. um, and also sexual injuries. So they've really got to take some responsibility as well, yeah. which is where I, I've got approached and said, can you educate the NHS? And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Because it's a preventative measure, you know? Exactly. It, it's a health and safety preventable mm. injuries. And it's about time it got spoken mm. about because, you know, people are slagging off the NHS, but they are so restricted by the government. You know, the police, you know, people seem to think that, you know, getting somebody charged for rape is, is simple. I can absolutely tell you it's not that simple and the the stress and the assisted help you need to get through it is is a lot mm. um is there um is there any um i don't know if it's been around long well, it must have be to with this sort of the on well watching porn and young people is there been enough years to understand the effects of that yet or are they still not there because it's definitely got to be doing something for young kids to have it yeah. on their phone. Which well, is not... I'm qualified in, in quite a few areas of, um, and especially one of them is like um, the, sexu- the impact on the younger person's yeah. brain. So, 
you know, the dopamine levels, mm. you know, this is why when you start off watching porn at a young age, it can become addictive because they're no different to giving your kid chocolate as a baby. Yeah. And then not shutting up until they get their hit again. Yeah. You know, it's just like any other hit. Sugar is a hit. So if you're going to start watching porn at a young age, then in your dopamine me- dop- dopamine levels are going up. And then eventually you're going to have to have something else to make them go up yeah. and then go up and go up and go up. And that's where it becomes more harmful. Now, people reckon that there's no such thing as being a sex addict. There's no such thing as being a porn addict. You can be addicted to anything. You can be addicted to tapping the table. You could be addicted to picking up and down a bottle of water or something. Mm. You know, everything ha- can have an addiction to it. So for children, as their brain is developing, their, you know, their, re- their serotonin, their dopamine levels are still developing. So pornography, yes, it can be damaging to young children, absolutely. Mm. And when you've got parents who are having to work full time to care for those children, or the parents that don't work are probably putting them in, you know, watching Coronation Street, EastEnders, and God knows, daytime TV, you know, which is also very unrealistic. Yeah. Um, Then children are getting damaged from a very, very young age. Yeah. Very, very young age. And it's not just pornography, but pornography contributes to their reality of sex and reality of a plumber coming around and fixing your drain pipe within yeah. about an hour. It doesn't happen. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's so... <laughs> but this is how kids kids need to be able to know it's serious and have a... And, and, but to be able to absorb that information and they're getting spoken at and not with. Yeah. Now, when I got trained and went on courses with the Family Planning Association, which is the original sex education provider in the UK... You know, this is only about two years after I'd left pornography, and they're like, oh, my God, thank God you've chosen to do this because we really need your help. And I'm like, oh, and I want your help. And they're like, no, the information you have is what is needed because, on, you know, in decades to come, this is going to be soul-destroying. Mm. And they're completely right. I mean, we're here two, two decades later, and still I'm not allowed to go into schools. Yeah, yeah it's because... Yeah. Because it's just such a like a it's a personal thing for like, if kids are watching porn they don't want to tell anyone because it's so frowned upon that that they they don't want to be open about it like you wouldn't go to your mum and dad and be like oh yeah I'm just watching yeah you're just watching <laughs> milk porn, porn absolutely yeah like it's frowned. and then so it if would... no one knows about it then then how is there any uh, well, help I, there I think the parents need to be educated <clears throat> that would <clears throat> be my belief I believe that you know when you've got your parents evening at school why not you know have a class there for the parents um to just say look you know there is an information class being taught on how to talk to your children about pornography Mm. because i'm not being funny it is a you're having children that child is reliant on you yeah you know and you know when you are born is such i'll put it in you know real easy words so everybody's got a laptop computer these days or, or a phone so it's brand new, it comes in spanking, no information, boom, fresh as a daisy. That's that's how we're born into the world. And you, it's only what you feed it and what keywords you put in, it can find stuff. And, you know, so you're programming something. And that's no different to what we're doing to our children. We're programming them. Hmm. And that child can only be, can, only knows what is what the information is it's fed it. So if, if a parent isn't talking to their children and they're having to go on the internet un and um supervise, supervise. Yeah. they're bringing up everything now yes you can stop kids using the internet you know especially and i'm and i'm not talking about teenagers mm. parents need to act now yeah i mean when i walk around this you know when you walk around town or something and you've got kids watching they're like oh they're on youtube watching a um a thing i'm like don't even touch it mm. i had a friend who had bought a specific um amazon laptop for children and it was meant to be one that nothing could get through. And he was sat in my house with his daughter and I saw something come up and I just grabbed it real quick. You know, it's, it's not the porn actresses and performers doing this. Mm. This is the person, the platforms yeah. that are yeah. getting through on the security levels. I mean, you've got to remember, these are very intelligent eye tech people. Pornhub was free IT people from Canada. Yeah. Mm. You know, and then flooded the internet. And unfortunately... You know, they tried to make out they had a, a, you know, a remedy for it, but they don't. I mean, How old are your kids, if you don't mind me asking? Now? Yeah. 29 and 27 now. Okay, so it was a while ago. Did you ever have a chat or did you just drip things in as they were growing up? 
So I don't know if the term uh, having a chat is like a bit outdated now. But. Yeah. I mean, basically, I spoke with my children. And the best way to do it, which I found, is, um, you know, they knew their mum was famous for a little bit and didn't know why. And, oh, my God. When some, when somebody asked my <laughs> one neighbour, this is when I first moved to London, lived in a really private gated area. And this neighbour had turned around to my children and said, oh, you know, what did you, you know, you're, just, you're new here. That's great. You know, welcome. What, you know, introduced their kids and went to, around to my son. He was only about six, I think. I said, what did your mum do? He goes, oh, she takes her clothes off. Oh, no. Fair enough. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, what? But he knew that little. He was still so innocent. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So what? how I dealt with mm. that is um, rather than talk, you know, just say, right, I need to sit you down and talk to you. Because I think that's talking at somebody, not with somebody. So even at six yeah. years old, there is kiddies programs. And, you know, um, Inside Out is a more modern one that's around. Oh, yeah. The movie. Fantastic Oh, I love movie. it so much. I, I watch them. Give that, <laughs> I watch that so many times. Every parent needs to watch it. It's about emotions and everything. Yeah, okay. it's really beautiful. good. It's, it's, done, it's done It's yeah. done really well. Okay. For an adult. Right. Oh, yeah. my God, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I was watching, say, a cartoon and maybe two characters in a cartoon had gone to kiss each other, and my son would go, oh, my God, they're about to kiss. I'm like, okay, what do you think kissing is? And he'd be like, well, they're going to have sex. And I said, well, what do you think sex is? And I would, well, I would interact with them, but let them lead. Yeah, mm. let them ask questions. Let them ask. Yeah. And yeah. I'd say to them, well, what do you think kissing is? And then it made me understand their knowledge yeah. from a very young age. Of mm. what they yeah, because they're going to naturally. Uh, I'm just thinking now. Then it was probably more the fault of parents because when kids probably did ask questions and they just go, oh, parents, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't the kids. Babies they were always going to ask questions. What's that? <laughs> always, Why are they doing yeah. that? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's no way I could have gone to my parents as a kid. I mean, you got me joking. I remember seeing their stash of porn in the cupboard. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm. <laughs> There's so much. I, I read um, mm. <laughs> um, the the niece of um, Trump. Yeah. And she's a psychologist and she wrote a book and she was talking about growing up in that family and what they were oh, like. Oh, wow. And the dad were like, the mum and dad were like Victorian. Like, exactly. And she yeah. said she was at the table once and she said, I asked, um, one of them was pregnant. She said, what's that bump in the, um, I can't remember, in the auntie's belly. Mm. And she said, the mum and dad put the knives and forks down and got up and left the room. That's how right. uptight they were, yeah. Couldn't yeah, even I face get... talking about it. Well, I had the same when I was younger, and I know that you know I come from a suburbia town, and I don't come mm. from a, a big city or anything, you know. And you know, back all those years ago, there was no education, and and nothing was spoken about. And I think that's why so many historical sex abuse cases are coming out now. Is people are like, oh, why are people coming forward now? And I'm thinking. You would have, if you would have asked my mother when I was younger, or tried to tell my mum something, she'd be like, "Oh, don't tell your dad; he'd get angry." Like mm. there were under then, it's like everything got swept under a carpet. Yeah. Yeah. And so that generation, which was my generation, grew up thinking, "Oh my God, we're, you know, nobody's going to listen to us, so why go there?" Or you know, and you have to break the cycle. Mm. Somebody has to. I mean, I broke the cycle well and mm. truly. You know, I mean, I found my grounding and my sexual consensual boundaries within pornography. I mean, that's oh. telling you something mm. because, you know, I remember my first stalker when I was thirteen. He got sent to jail, and I was <laughs> thirteen. Thirteen. You didn't even know what a stalker 13. was. Thirteen. I didn't have a clue. How old was he? He was much older. He was about twenty-five. Oh, gross! And he used to live in the same street further down and masturbate in his window. And then oh. one night, he followed me home. And my friend who lived across the road, her dad came over and said, look, you know, he's in your garden now. And I was... I'm, I'm so a, sorry that you had to go through oh, about 13. I, I may have been younger, 12, 11, 12. Yeah. Um, and I had to go through that and the police had to come and interview me. And then his... Obviously you in don't his, fully understand either. Yeah, I didn't have a clue like, what was going yeah. on. And then one of my other friends had got caught being abused by her father. And, you know, nobody really discussed it and it was an embarrassment to you know for my friend she moved away she couldn't deal with the embarrassment so I, I think many years ago you weren't able to talk about anything let alone talking about sex education um parents just didn't know how to do it and that's because they're not trained so I do believe that every parent should at some stage or another um have to go and if they want to talk about their children instead of you know blaming everybody else why don't you take a class in sex education or 
you know, even contact me. How do I chat to my children about pornography? Yeah. I've written papers on it, you know, and they're on the, they're on the website Medium. Because bear in mind, even if the problem was there in the 80s, 90s and all that, you didn't have hardcore porn on your phone as a kid, so you better start talking yeah, you, about it now. Better yeah. stop. <laughs> you might have got away with it for a while. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember giving my son his first mobile phone at 13. It was linked to my account. That was the last thing I was thinking <laughs> of. All, I mean, you know, my, I, I just know that on his first week, he ran me up an £1,100 bill from texting, uh, don't know anything. texting numbers in the yeah. back of a newspaper. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I was going to actually ask you about the... Um, like your kids' friends and other parents, how did they feel about... Did you have lots of, you know, like parties? How did they feel about, like, um, coming think, over? And So, no, I've never been... You know, since you know, since my kids have been at, were at your school and everything, I was never one to have lots of people over my house anyway. Mm. Um, but then, obviously, when I was in the industry and I used to drop them off at the school gates and stuff, I mean... There was a lot of people going, oh, you know, oh, my God, it's great. You know, you've made something of yourself. I think, oh. And then there was other ones going, oh, my God, you know, and grabbing their kids. And yeah, back. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, I'll tell you one of the worst things was, it wasn't so much the women trying to shield their children from me. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You're not going to say the husband. Oh, the husband. It was the husband. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously sex mad. Yeah. Is, yeah. And, and, I used to, and I mean, I, it, it got a little bit too much... And first of all, I used to say to him, look, you've got nothing to worry about. I mean, your 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 husband's not writing me a check. You know, mm. he's, he's not paying my salary, so I wouldn't worry about it one bit. And then it, it would go on every day at the school, and eventually I'd, I'd get a little bit bitter and I became a little bit too cocky probably. And I'd turn around to him and say, look, sweetheart, I said, I don't want your man. I said, so you're totally safe. I said, but when you're going later and he's fucking you, he's thinking of me. <laughs> <laughs> I and love then you that. just change schools immediately. <laughs> Can't we going? Well, in fact, we moved to London yeah. out of the suburban area, and everything was fine. Because yeah. <laughs> in London, it's just like they think very differently yeah, to course, a suburban yeah. area. Yeah. So it kind of changed up here, and then um, I went into managing adult stars. You know, when my son, you know, after my retirement, um, because of the Ron situation, I knew that I had to protect other young women that were doing pornography. So I went into management, and so like. My son was brought up around some very famous adult stars, but they're not, they don't behave at my house like they do yeah, on set. Exactly, they're yeah. probably in tracky decks with their hair tied Who's back. She? Mm. Yeah, no yeah. makeup, yeah. trainers on, and probably munching on fish and chips. Yeah, yeah. Or something. <laughs> so, no, you know, he, his impression, he got to real, realize they, they were real people. Mm. And my son actually has no judgments yeah. on oh, people. Lovely. As long as you are kind, and my, my son, you know, people always thought I would have. Children that were drug addicts or alcoholics, not at all. My mm. son hardly drinks, mm. never been a day out of work. He's lived all over the world. He's a chef. I mean, that's probably my fault, that bit, because <laughs> I never cooked, I never do. And I used to have a live-in nanny to take that job on. Mm. But, you know, never. Um, and people actually do turn around to me a lot of the time. I mean, I don't go back to my hometown very often now, but I'm very supported. Yeah. Mm. They're like, you know, you obviously went for a lot that we didn't realise. But it's like, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do. He's seen you work really hard like, and, and bring in the money and be so, I don't know, what's it, passionate about what you do. And, you know, like, yeah. He, yeah he's obviously he's, seen that grown up. He's and, been, yeah, yeah. He's, he's been absolutely, you know, my best supporter. I mean, mm. during COVID when, we, when I was doing counselling, you know, there was a lot of, adult stars and a lot of people in abusive relationships and I was having to safeguard some people and um, working all night and day long with um, counselling situations and my son was like mum who's looking after you right now and mm -hmm. you know and then I realised I had to take a brain and then obviously with the police from the, from America and having to go to America and give evidence at, you know big trials and he was just like he's looking after you he's yeah. looking after you and so he's quite at, he's, what does um, he do for a job? Chef. Oh, chef. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he can eat is, now. is he married? <laughs> no. No. no, and he has the utmost respect for women. If he went to a bar, which is very unlikely because he doesn't, yeah. um, he absolutely cannot stand a man chatting up a drunken woman. Mm. He finds it so insulting because they were vulnerable and they're just taking advantage. Yeah. yeah. And, but he's such a genuine, beautiful, caring um, young man 
But he, again, doesn't... Dating sites. You know, you're meeting girls who... Are, most of them do have OnlyFans accounts now. Mm. Or they they want to be admired. I mean, you've only got to look onto Instagram. And my son, like somebody... He wants an authentic person who has an individual kind of outlook. Yeah. And, mm. But knows themselves. He's like, I want somebody who's maybe been through struggles in life because they're real yeah mm. um he doesn't want a a, a a a girl that needs a gucci handbag and high heel shoes yeah. you know that's not him yeah so looking forward then so what's going on what have you got you've mentioned a few things about you're doing so the film a book so much i know somebody produces autobiography so i can talk to you about that mm -hmm. but um what about long term? Is there anything long term? Are you planning on leaving the country? Are you planning on no? I'm staying. I'm a... staying in the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I emigrated to Australia in 2011, came back 2017. They're very liberated yeah. in Australia. <laughs> so, what are you Practicing. planning on doing? Sort of five years. What What's going to be out? It's going to be a hopefully a Netflix series. A book will be done. Yeah. Well, the Netflix series. I mean, I'm in talks with uh, Dominique. He's from Paris, and he done the Halloween movies. Yeah. Mm. And a few other movies. And I, I deliberately watched of how he directed sex scenes in his mainstream movies, and they were done so well. And so we, you know, I've now got to get back to the drawing board. I mean, I've written a lot of my biography, but left some stuff out because years ago, when Random House um, asked me to write a book. They wanted certain things left out because they did never wanted to get questioned about any su suing, and then they also wanted it to be a misery memoir. Very fortunate, a well known, um, a, a, a well known media guy from the UK pulled me aside. He said, "Look, Leanne, you're too young to write a biography. Wait until you're fifty. Yeah, I'm forty nine, so that's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> um, but no, I'm carrying on with the NHS on uh, the sex education side and the research projects, mm. and still be educating." Um, on pornography to professionals who don't, you know, who deal with sexual crimes and sexual behaviours but don't know about pornography. So, and I still always work beside the Met Police so if a crime comes in within the porn industry, then I will. Counselling, I decided that, you know, especially after the wrong case during COVID, um, it's easier for me to work in education than doing one-to-one -one counselling. However, I still am available if the girls are obviously in any trouble. Um, but no, the education route. So, and um, what do you sort of do for yourself? Like, what do you do on like, all your own hobbies and things? Well, I'm, what do you... I'm also training, and you're probably going to be on mad. <laughs> um, but my friend runs a Pilates gym, and she keeps getting let down. So I'm, doing, I'm actually getting trained in Pilates right oh, now. That's nice. Well, one, yeah. A lot of the stuff I've done since leaving, you know, even you know, I've worked on Jeremy Carl's an expert before, and I've worked on loads of sex like shows, you know on Channel 4, Channel 5 and stuff. And I took a break and I got qualified in fitness years ago um, and managed gyms. I didn't go in, I didn't get qualified to teach people or be a private trainer. I went in there to manage gyms. So, you know, I became number four saleswoman in the UK for Nuffield, a few, you know, two decades ago. Oh, wow. And so my passion is, you know, I've always wanted to care for, about other people, about how to help them invest in their self. You know, that's mm. what counselling is about. That's what running fitness centres is about. You know, being in a, you know, I'd done probation work before poor and that was about getting other people to help their self. So I'm staying within, you know, in the arena. The well-being. The, the well-being. So do you do Pilates now? I do. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm qualified in yoga as well. I did five years ago. I took on a challenge and went to India to get oh. qualified in yoga in 28 days. What do you prefer, the yoga or the Pilates? Uh, definitely Pilates. Yeah. I mean, yoga's good if you can bend your spine yeah. and everything. Mm. But It's more physically effective than Pilates. Yeah, yeah I've been to a Pilates class before and I thought I was doing it right. And I was the only one that she kept going over to, like, no, you need to have your back like this. Yeah, you need to yeah, have it yeah. straight. And I just had terrible posture. <laughs> so I'd, I... Make your back touch the floor. Bring yeah. your belly button into your spine. Make sure your pelvis is in the correct, you know, yeah, thing. I think and that's I, lying I'm... down. And then you've got to learn how to yeah. do your pelvis stood up or sat. I was speaking to a female trainer. Um, she was a bodybuilder, like a proper bodybuilder. And she said, because we were talking about a magazine, but it's a long story. She said, she said, there's so many things like people don't know. And because that's what we were discussing i said you know like, i i have to, I'd have to tell women in their 35 to 40 year range that's when you lose the weight and can tone up the easiest because your estrogen levels drop that's right so you've actually got this big window where you can exercise and get 10 times the effect you did that when you're yeah. in your 20s he you said people don't even know that he said it's the best time to train is when you're so in your 35 it, yeah 35 because your yeah. estrogen levels drop because estrogen keeps water oh, yeah i mean i'm on i'm on a hormone replacement 
I have done, you know, I nearly died in Australia from a boob job. That's a whole different yeah. story. Oh and um, when you come back from that, I'd gone into instant menopause at 37. So I've been on a HRT since then because you've got to take it to you at least 50 because mm. of osteoporosis. Um, but of course, it just makes your hormones like a teenager again. I'm like, do you know how bad I was as a teenager? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah st don't start again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know they said life begins at yeah. 40, yeah. but yeah. seriously, Not give again. me a break. <laughs> Right, so, well, there you go. I think we covered everything there. Yeah. Did uh, everything we've got. Everything. I, I, don't know, I don't know, it just popped into my head. I'd forgotten this. There was a, <laughs> it's not on. really relevant. There was a, there was a video. Oh, God, I can't remember why it popped up. But anyway, it's somebody said, um, it was a series. They were asking people things. And there was this American journalist, and he was asking people. And he's saying this seriously. He was saying, um, like, there's a new statistic that's just come out that 99% um, of American men um, claim to masturbate. And what do you think about that? And the guy, just some old guy, he said, it tells me 1% of American men lie. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll end there. So I love it. Well, listen, Leanne, best wishes to everything. Oh, thank you for coming thank in you today. So it's been, it's been thank great. You. Right, thank thank you. you. And we'll see you next week for some more fun. Thanks.